How's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today, I'm going to red pill a lot of you. There's a truth that's been hidden from most of you for your entire lives. And once you understand this truth, it's going to become much simpler for you to be able to just go about your everyday life. Opportunities are going to open up that were never there before. And the lie that you've been told this entire time is that conical tips are good for soldering. This lie is told in many forms, but the fact that most soldering irons on the market come with a conical tip rather than a bevel tip or a knife tip demonstrates just how deep this conspiracy goes. These tips suck. I cannot stand conical tips. I remove them from all of my stations. I actually had to go into the basement to look in our recycling pile to find one because typically when we purchase soldering products, if they come with a conical tip, we throw them away from the moment that they show up because these are evil and they do bad things to people. And some of the bad things are like this thing that I just got emailed recently by somebody who was having issues. And he said, you know, I follow all your stuff in your videos. I'm like, do you? Because I don't use conical tips. And stuff like this happens where he's trying to wick but he can get a little bit of solder on, and as you can see, it never really turns into a lump because it's not transferring heat properly, and then he can't get it off, and the wick gets stuck, and he gets stuck with this. And that's because when I asked him what type of tip he's using, he says I'm using the tip on the bottom. Shit like this. This is bad. Very, very bad. People have this idea that if you're doing micro-soldering, that you need the teeny, tiniest tip in the world to get the most accuracy, and it's actually the exact opposite. What you want is maximum heat transfer. It doesn't matter if your iron is set to 900 degrees if you have this much space to transfer it with because there's not a lot of thermal mass. I can have my iron set to a much lower temperature than you when I'm using a proper tip like this, otherwise known as a thick boy, and not only can I still do it, do all the work that I usually do and get everything off, I can even micro solder with it. I'm going to display the differences to you today, and I'm going to make my case that you guys should stop using conical tips. And if they come with your iron, try a different tip before you, you know, write yourself off as somebody who can micro solder. Don't just say, I guess I five failed. I can't do the work that Lewis does on camera because, I, you know, it, it doesn't come out the way his does. Well, you're, you're not using my tip. And once you understand how to utilize a high performance tip, your performance will improve considerably. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna remove the LCD connector that's on this board. I'm going to recreate the fault condition that I see on screen there. And then I'm gonna show you how much easier it is to use a proper tip to do the job. But then further, I am going to red pill you even more by soldering a connector to this board where there's all these components right next door. I'm gonna do the soldering work with a giant tip and demonstrate that the giant tip does make it possible. We may also mess around with some QFN chips for a, just to demonstrate again how useless that conical tip is for QFN chips as well. Again, there's this misconception that people have that you must use a tip that's really, really pointy because the connections are really small and I want to be really precise with it. And that's a very, very common newbie mistake that I used to have as well. To be clear, it actually is possible to remove these connectors without smoking them, but I just, I, I kind of get a sick, sadistic pleasure out of it. So. <laughs> Anyway, besides them, I, I, I like burning apple boards. But anyway, in all seriousness, let's recreate some of the fall condition. So I'm going to put a bunch of solder here, and then I'm going to put a conical tip on here and try doing any sort of wicking, and I want you to see how hard it is versus something beveled like a BCM2. So let's get my conical tip in here. Now, the other thing you may notice with my conical tip versus my bevel tip is that it looks like it's never been used. That's because it probably hasn't until today. So I'm gonna find some wick, some nice clean wick. You can get wick at store.rossmangroup.com, store.rossmangroup.com. Don't forget about it just because I haven't shilled it in a while. And look what happens when I try to wick. See? Nothing comes, like, this is, this is horrible. I'm not, not really getting anywhere. Like, again, you see? Like, and then, oh shit, I heated it enough that the wick got stuck. All right, so check it out. So look. I'm heating it, and you can heat it enough that the wick gets stuck here, but I'm not really able to do much of anything. Like, I was, it, and it did heat enough that wick did heat up and get stuck in this blob, but it doesn't do anything. It's insanely frustrating. And if you are you having the same user experience, you may think, well, I just can't solder. I suck. There's something wrong with me. However, then when you take the conical piece of crap off of the iron, and then you put on the incredibly amazing, based, beautiful, godlike BCM2 tip. Let me show you the difference. I'm just going to wait for that big boy to heat up. It takes an additional second or two to heat up because it's so big. All right, now watch this. 
Now there's two things about this. The first is, you see how it has a hole in the bottom of it? There's actually a hole in the bottom of that tip that will suck up solder, which makes it easier for wicking jobs. But wait, there's more. You do this, oh, bada bing, bada boom. Just like that. Look at that, look at that. Now I know what you're also thinking. Well, Lewis, this is micro soldering. Okay, you're able to wick with that, but how am I going to put the connector back on the board? Because that tip is so big, it's far too big for me. Well, it's a common misconception that the tip can be too big for you. You see, you can adapt the tip to your situation. You don't need to simply switch out tips just because you have a different situation all the time. It's very easy, even though this is a very small area, to be quite comfortable with a giant tip. So, what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna solder on a new connector. I actually grabbed the wrong connector for this board, but again, since this is a donor board for demonstration, it don't, doesn't really matter. It's still get the point across. It's not like this piece of crap board will ever have video again anyway. So I'm going to solder on a new connector. By the way, you can buy both of these types of connectors at store.rossmangroup.com if you ever need. Let's clean that off a little bit. Now watch how this goes on, even with the giant tip. Just gonna get rid of that alcohol over there because it's gonna mess with my flux. My soldering. All right. Add some flux. Just a small amount, not too much. Just the right amount. Now, this iron is actually gonna have some solder already in it because of that little hole in the bottom that I showed you. Or not. I forgot I wicked it all up. Well, usually it will if you didn't wick it all up. But anyway, back to this. So, watch, you're gonna do this. Now, I'm gonna do the anchor pins, and then I'm gonna do all the ones around it as well. I'm gonna do a couple with the conical, and then a couple with this, so you can get an idea of how that goes. So see, I'm able to maneuver the tip by just turning it around in here. Now see over there, what, what people are gonna do, usually, is they'll say, I need a conical tip. How am I gonna touch this pin without touching that pin? That's why people think they need a conical tip. But those are people that have not met the joy of something called drag soldering, which is where I can simply hold this like this, and oh, oh, that's nice. Look at that. See, just drag from one to the other. There you go. And now let me just go back to the conical tip to show you how I would do it with the conical. Ugh, conical. What people would do is this. See, this is, uh, oh. Look, it's melting solder, but oh. Oh, oh God. Is this what your connectors look like? Like, yeah, like, no, no, no. All right, let's, let me try to do that again over here, right? This is probably what your soldering looks like if you're a noob. And you think, wow, Lewis must have some magic trick that he knows that I don't. And it's like, no, I just don't use shitty tips. Okay, see, technically I can get that done. Like, if I'm really careful with it, I can do this. But my hand shakes a lot, so I don't usually, I don't like to rely on this. Like, technically you can do this if you're amazingly skilled, but it requires such a high level of skill and you gotta get it just right without touching anything right next to it because God forbid you, you touch them next to it, you'll get a giant bridge. Now let's say you're new and you don't realize that your solder is moving up the iron like this one is. Watch what happens here. You'll probably do something like this and then, ah, you got a bridge. And then let's try getting rid of the bridge with the conical tip. So annoying. Ah. And then you go back to this beautiful BCM2 over here. Let's go to my BCM2. Which and I can do this. Watch this. Now remember, it has a hole in the bottom of it that's going to absorb all the extra solder. So if you have excess on one of these pins, it'll just absorb it like that. And then I can even absorb the excess from the pins in the bottom, have it absorbed into the bottom of this tip, and then distribute it to the pins that are on the right. Watch this. I'm going to see if I can get rid of this big thing here without any wick. 
That's going to be difficult, but let's see if we can get it done. The big mess up that I did over here. We're going to see if I can do that without a new wick and without getting a new connector. Yeah, see how easy that is because it's got the hole in the bottom? It just absorbs the extra solder. Now, this set is going to be hard because you have these capacitors next to it over here, and also some of those pins have been bent by my dramatizing and being aggressive with my conical tip. But anyway, you get the idea. Now, let's move on to something else like a QFN package. People will think, well, I need to get all those individual pins, so I'm just going to take off this QFN package, and we'll do some of it with a conical and some of it with a knife, and I'll show you the difference. And we're going to do this with a smaller iron this time. I want to show you the difference between a knife. So usually the two tips that I go for are my BCM2 on my big iron, and I usually use a knife tip on my small iron. So even on my small iron, I tend to avoid conical tips unless I have a very specific application that I'm using it for. And remember, there's a good chance that this applies to you. There's a very good chance that this applies to you because most soldering irons come with conical tips. It's a cancer. Now let's... Now you guys see how I usually just hot air a QFN in, right? But let's just hypothetically say that for the sake of today, for the sake of experience, we're going to do the pins on our own. So I'm going to kind of hot air them. I'm going to put a little bit of solder in here because, again, it has to be heat sinked on. But I'm not really going to have the, the pins soldered around it. We're going to have to do that by hand because I want to demonstrate the difference in these two tips. Okay, so the middle pin is there. I'm going to wick this a little bit. Okay. Now, let's use the conical tip for a moment. Let's just do a couple of individual pens. Conical tip, baby. Yeah, look at look at how accurate it is. I can do one by one, and I have a little crusty bunch of shit. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try using a knife tip. So this is a, this is shaped like a knife. It's not conical. See that? And watch how beautifully this solders a QFN. It's literally, it's effortless. Like one swipe, and you can get every joint to look almost identical. Just like that. Just move away the flux so that you can see it. The temperature on this is not hot enough to melt solder. I just have it hot enough that I can Move away some of the flux so that you can see some of that there. One joint in the left looks a little shitty. So we just do this with a knife. And we can touch it up. The knife makes it very, very convenient. Same thing with the connector up here. Watch how the knife, knife works. Makes it easy to take excess solder away and drag it to other pins. I might even be able to bend this pin back. That's being greedy. Okay, yeah, I tried to touch the sun with that one. Anyway. Got a little too greedy. There we go. So I got one pin bent back. And let's get this one back where it belongs to. So there's a lot of flexibility that you get with different types of tips. And a lot of what you may perceive as your own lack of skill 
may actually just be your own ignorance and the type of tips to use. But once you start experimenting with different soldering iron tips, again, I highly recommend messing with the Hacko BCM2 or whatever the equivalent is for the brand and make of soldering iron you work on, and something like the T30KN, which is the knife tip that I just demonstrated to you. It makes it a lot easier to get certain things like this done. And please, please, please do not wick with a conical tip or a pointy tip. It's going to make your job hell. If anything, I would suggest only using the pointy tips when you absolutely positively need a pointy tip. Paul uses the pointy tip when doing flex gate repairs because it is the right tool for that job. However, it's not the right tool for most jobs that you're going to be doing, and it is included as the default tip for the iron, which is going to make you think it's right, the right tip for most of your jobs, when in fact it's not. Hopefully this video has been informative, and hopefully you stop banging your head on the desk wondering why it is I can't get this done, thinking that the problem is you, your lack of skill, you're just not good enough, you're never going to get this, when in reality spending 20 to 30 bucks on the right tip will get you 99% of the way there. Please do experiment on your own, and I highly encourage that you get donor boards like this. Don't do this type of experimentation on a board that matters to you. Don't do this type of experimentation on something that's expensive where you're going to feel bad if you break it. Get yourself an Acer you know, 5517, some cheap piece of shit on eBay. Buy two or three of them so that you can mess around between one that works and one that doesn't, and if one of them stops working, you got parts from another one. You can get stuff that's 10 years old pretty cheaply. I would get a couple of models just so that you could experiment. You got a, a full machine that works for donor parts so that you could take stuff from one and put it on another and do all this type of experimentation. Then once you get really, really confident and you know you got the right tools and everything that works for you, at that point, then you'll be able to work on something that is important to you. One thing I'm excited about when we move to Texas is I'm going to be able to do these repair workshops full time. It's not something that I'm able to do at the moment because I need to monetize every person and everything that we're doing here because this space that I'm in right now costs $13,600 a month and everything else in New York is not exactly cheap. But part of my new arrangement with Futo is running an open to the public repair workshop slash makerspaces kind of space where people can walk in at any given time with stuff like this, stuff that they have problems with, and be able to actually get some help and be able to sit at a station and work on it on their own, which I'm really excited to be a part of because if something like that were open when I started off in this industry, rather than me, it taking me three or four years to get good at board repair, you never know. Maybe I would have been there in three months and I want to give that opportunity to as many people as humanly possible who wouldn't be able to afford it. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Stop using conical tips. Bye now.